Shri Ananda Mahima is a beloved Hindu saint who graced our planet from 1896 to 1982. She was born in the village of Kyora in present-day Bangladesh. Her name, Ananda Mahima, was given to her by her devotees and means joy permeated mother in Sanskrit. She attained self-initiation at 26 years of age. Her saintly qualities have been widely recognized and have also been mentioned by Paramhansa Yogananda in his book Autobiography of a Yogi as follows. I had instantly seen that the saint was in a high state of samadhi, utterly oblivious to her outward garb as a woman, she knew herself as the changeless soul. From that plane, she was joyously greeting another devotee of God. She travelled throughout India and Bangladesh teaching the importance of living a God-centered life. Everyone could be in tune with the Divine, and every opportunity in one's life, be it work or family, done with sincerity, love and devotion would enable one to walk the noble path. She was a vegetarian with a compassionate love for every living being. Her acceptance of all faiths and backgrounds along with her universal teachings of divine love and joy has enabled countless people from different walks of life to benefit from her wisdom. Sri Ananda Mahima was renowned for her realization of joyous self-sufficiency and ability to lovingly connect with people through her spontaneous discourses kindly directed at the individual audience to enable greatest understanding. Let us continue with selections from the book Sadvani, a collection of the teachings of Sri Ananda Mahima, recorded and translated by her devotees Paiji and Atmananda respectively, where the devoted saint gives guidance on how to be close to God. All creatures are fundamentally one, for the whole universe is a manifestation of the one. A man who hears the word Himalaya without having actually set eyes on the mighty rains will be under the impression that it is but a single mountain, whereas once face to face with the Himalayas, he will realize that they consist of hundreds upon hundreds of peaks stretching over hundreds of miles with millions of trees, animals, birds, insects with streams and waterfalls. Similarly, the farther one advances or the deeper one penetrates on the path of sadhana or spiritual exercise, the more clearly will be perceived the one revealed in the many and the many in the one. In actual fact, we are always with the one, but distracted by the many, we forget him. Step by step, we learn to walk. Mouthful by mouthful, we satisfy our hunger. Single letters are composed into words. Groups of days form a month, and months added together constitute a year. You often say there is only the one without a second. This is indeed a fact, for in this universe, there is nothing except the One. The world is made up of sense perceptions. Although each one of the five senses reveals a different facet of the immensity of creation, yet their endless movement originates from the One, and they again find their rest in Him. Their whole significance lies in giving expression to the One. With the one goal before you, try to focus your whole attention on one form, one perfume, one contact, or one sound, and you will eventually come to see that everything is contained in this one. Thereupon, you will realize that the one appears as the many, and that in very truth, the many are the one, 
you will know that nothing whatsoever exists outside of the one. So long as speech has to be employed, use your words sparingly. Listen and try to assimilate what others say, and only when necessity demands, utter a few words measured out in homeopathic doses, as it were. Have you not noticed that where large quantities of allopathic medicine fail, a few drops of homeopathic medicine sometimes work wonders? What is the hidden motive behind talkativeness? Is it not to display superiority or erudition, or else to defeat someone by argument? The force of action is much greater than mere words. Superficial conversation and discussion will not take you far. Practice self-introspection and calm the passions of the heart, and you will see how little inclination there is then for talk. At all times, gaze into the heights and keep on mounting. If you aim at what is low, you will sink down into the netherworld. Accustomed to take the even easy road, you have almost lost the ability to aspire after the sublime. Although you are in the habit of seizing opportunities as they present themselves at every moment, you fail to use this faculty in the right direction. Make a sustained effort to aim at the highest, and if your eyes cannot always remain turned towards the sky, you can surely at least keep them fixed straight ahead. The courage to climb upwards comes through enterprise and perseverance. You often complain that the body is willing, but the mind does not cooperate or else that the mind is quite active but the body lags behind. When this is so, you will have to set to work with untiring energy or your downfall is inevitable. Courage is required in whatever one does. Courage itself is power. Try always to spend as much time as you can in the open air keeping the body as bare as is practicable. Gaze to your heart's content at the lofty mountains or on the wide ocean and your words will be frank and free. If you cannot do anything else, at least peer at the open sky whenever you have the chance. Little by little, the rigid knots that make up your circles will be loosened and you will find yourself becoming freer. A fully awakened consciousness functions only through an untrammeled mind and body. To be fettered is to be crippled. You brought nothing into this world but your naked body, and one day you will have to depart stripped of everything. If during the short period that lies between birth and death you are burdened with too many possessions and luxuries, it will be very painful to leave them behind. Keep your body light and your mind will be light. When both body and mind are light, it is easy to attain liberation. Why do you accumulate wealth and possessions in order to maintain yourself and your family? And for whom does the family exist? If you give a straightforward reply, you will have to admit that it is for yourself. But if you ask, what is this self? You will find no answer and your intelligence can take you no further. Who am I? Once you sit down and ponder seriously over this question, you will soon discover that all the book learning that you have crammed into your brain in school and college and all the practical experience you have gained in active life are not of the slightest help in solving this question. If you want to discover the origin of the sense of I and mine, you will have to alter the whole course of your thinking and give your undivided attention to the search for truth. Whenever the mind starts wondering, it must be firmly brought back to concentration upon the source of the I. 
This is the means by which to arrive at self-realization or Atmadarshan. For more information on Sri Ananda Mahima Vegetarian, please visit Sri Sri Ananda Mahima Sangh dot org. By ethical conduct toward all creatures, we enter into a spiritual relationship with the universe. The Reverend Dr. Albert Schweitzer, M.D., Vegetarian. Compassionate viewers, it was a joy that you could join us today for Words of Wisdom. 